as weapons, discipline, and self integrity. So let's welcome one and all our respected Vice Chancellor Sri Jarnail Sinji. So, welcome to the program. Good morning to all of you. Good morning, sir. Uh, it's a wonderful thing that uh, the departments are organizing two day workshop webinar on adventure sports. Uh, the adventure sport is the one of the latest thing and latest craze among all the sports lovers. The word adventure and the word sports, they are wonderful words. When we say adventure, it involves risk, exploring new thing, uh, getting thrill, uh, exceeding human body limits in exercise, and also experiencing something new. When we talk adventure, it means we are going to feel or do something new, adventurous. Sports. These are uh, organized games which we play within certain rules. And they teach us how to be good human beings, how to be broad-minded, how to be like a sportsman. Play for the game. Play for winning, but even if you lose, have the same spirit. Both these uh, adventure and sp adventure sports is one of the wonderful uh, things which can happen and which uh, the university is organizing. It will expose the participants to something new, which they will be happy. And my congratulations to Dr. Santosh and all the other uh, persons who are organizing this. Uh, seminar and this will encourage the sports this will uh, teach the students how to be adventurous and how to involve in the adventure sports and it will also help in refreshing their minds taking them to far away from their daily routine where they can feel uh, fresh uh, they can feel happy and they can feel energetic and may like to explore more and more Thank you. I wish all of you a wonderful uh, uh, day in two days seminar. And I wish that the your uh, seminar, your this workshop uh, proceedings will be helpful to all the participants. And uh, it will help all the uh, people who organize and will also give, bring good name to the university. Thank you very much. Welcome, sir. <laughs> May I request our coordinator of adventure sports for Manipur University, Assistant Professor, Department of Physical Education and Sports Science, Dr. L. Santosh Singh, to please address the gathering for the keynote address. Sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Roshni. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank our Honorable Vice Chancellor of Manipur University, respected Shri Zarnil Singh, Registrar of the Manipur University, Professor W. Sanbabu Singh, to giving opportunity to have the platform of workshop, adventure, sports, two days the level. Thank you so much. And respected or Dean School of Human and Environmental Science, and respected or head. Department of Physical Education Sports Science mm -hmm. and respected to all the advisory committee and respected to all the organizing committee members and our te technical supporters and all the participants. <coughs> I'd like to thank you to all of you. So in this inaugural function and then opportunity of the keynote address, I would like to Welcome some of the our eminent invited speaker. Number one, Dr. K. Romeo Maite, a bench sports promoter, state awardee, and secretary. Uh, Indian Mountain Foundation's Norris John. I welcome you, sir. And Dr. L. Sorjit Singh, a bench sports 
and tourism promoter, former uh, presidents of the MMTA, Manipur Mountain Tracking Association. I welcome you, sir. And I would like to welcome Srimati G. Anita Devi, uh, Padma Sari Awardee, as well as Chairman, Indian Mountaineering Foundation of Northeast Zone. And I welcome you. So as a keynote speaker, I would like to share some of the information about the Adventure Sports. Adventure Sports, as we know together, it is one of the primary things as well as very much important for each and everyone in the society. Adventure Sports is very fast growing up in the state and in the country. It is totally different <clears throat> from the sports as well as our traditional sports type of activity. It is really a very, very exciting activity and a wonderful experience of the life type of activity. So this is a very uh, important and comprising of a wide range of the activity. For example, mountaineering, trekking, rock climbing, sports climbing, skiing, and water sports, as well as river rafting, canoeing, kayaking, and sailing, parasailing, and paraguiding, zip line, scuba, diving. They all are very, very popular adventure sports activity. Adventure sports activity are undertaken at various different places, but it should be different situations of the of nature and the climate, as well as an environment. According to depending our situation, depending our nature, depending our climate and the, our environment, we must need to assess any situation, nature, climate, and we must accept it in any situation that is a dangerous life of the activity. So today, adventure sports uh, comes under the noun that people will have to learn that adventure sports is one of the fundamental way of the life and self-realize as well as teamwork and to live the, their respective comfortable zone. <laughs> this all kind of the elements can bring together our results in our life. That is better and the lifestyle, improve the quality of your life and improve the self-esteem and increase the level of our confidence. And that transform into the aspects of your life and as well as our quality of the life and meaningful of the life. So I believe that Adventures, lover, true lover of the adventures, always looking for opportunity to the challenges their life, themselves, and himself to learn a new thing from their experience. Now, well, I believe that adventure sports is one of the Mac booster and involving the youth physically and mentally, socially, and spiritual well being to make a society a good and to make a healthy society, healthy nations. So I already mentioned uh, that earlier, adventure sports is one of the very exciting experience and sports, as we say, is one involving of the physical exertion and skill level. And so that the activities perceived as having a high level of inherent danger for those activities which often involve speed, height, a high level of physical exertion and highly specialized gear, the all comes under the Avenger Sports. So we have different type of the Avenger Sports, many, many Avenger Sports over here in the society, but in the uh, Avenger Sports, mainly we have three area. One is the on lands, another one is the in the air and in the water. I'm not going through details or the all kind of the types of the activity of the events. The expert will be go through all the lands and the year and the water. So every discipline now they have their aim and objective. So in our 
A benzene is forced on okay. we have M. So the M of the benzene is forced is to provide a careful yeah, yeah, simulating environment which will help is visual and excellent audition for great learning and independence. So trail assignment fun, explore to nature, self-assessment, overcome fears and develop self-confidence, enhancement of decision-making power, generalization of energy, stress booster, information and knowledge enhancement, development of balance and positive toward the, our attitude toward the lifestyles, encouragement to social relationship and teamwork, and develop motor and cognitive skills, creative learning, and inculcate the values of the among the youths. So if really want to be aimed, we have to find an objective of the events and sports. What are the events and sports I want to share to all of you? See, so number one, to make effort to minimize pollution factors of live natural environment, to get information about the area and its topography, and to develop sense of togetherness, team effort, and leadership ability, to improve physical fitness, to provide recreation, excitement, and thrill, to improve bonding with nature, to face the challenges against the adverse situation effectively, and to create creativity, to improve social relations, and to develop self-confidence and concentration, mm -hmm. to face challenges and crises and situations. They all are comes under the really in the happenings within the advantage sports that are our aim and objective. So we have the scope and we have the career opportunity after inter the events and sports. Now we have so many different kinds of the scope and adventure career opportunity. Some of the area I want to highlight to all of you. So number one is the events and sports teachers, events and sports coach, events and sports instructor, events and sports trainer. Adventure Park Administrator, Tracking and Tour, Leader Guide, Rescue, Fast Adder, Adventure to Organizer and Operator, and Disaster Management. They all are scope and career opportunity. So we have the pursuit of study groups in the India, so many different kinds of the institutions, associations, a level of university in India to offering the Adventure Sports course. So, some of the important institutions and associations in university I'd like to mention in this moment. So first of all, Himalayan monitoring institutions, and Dazzling, Nehru Institute of Monitoring, Uttarkashi, Zolan Institution of Monitoring and Winter Sports, Jammu and Kashmir, National Institute of Water Sports, Goa, Atal Bihari Baspaisi Institute of Monitoring and Allied Sports, Himachal Pradesh, National Institution of Monitoring and Allied Sports, Arunachal Pradesh, NIMAS, Manipur Monitoring Tracking Association, <clears throat> MMTA Manipur. They all are level of their institutions and association. They're offering different kind of the course in the events and sports. So in the university level, so far in the India, we have the three university are offering the events and sports till that. So number one is the Pune University, Pune, Second one is the Swanims, Gujarat Sports University, Gujarat. Third one is the Manipur University, Kanchipur, and Manipur. Manipur University already started offering the events and sports course from the last oh, year. We no. already offer events and sports, two months certificate course. In the near future, also in Manipur University, we are going to open the, our, uh, our programs. Diploma as well as a degree course we are planning to open in the Manipur University. So, so many different kind of the benefits of events and sports. So, I would like to read out the one by one. What are the benefits of the events and sports? So, we we'll see together all together. Number one is the increased fitness level. Number two, better cardiovascular health, improved balance and emotional stability, positive thinking, and all of improve concentration and confidence level, improve decision-making skills, higher level of self-esteem, ability to work with others, enhance observation skills, improve problem-solving abilities, mental sharpness, 
improve the problem solving abilities mental soundness multiple muscle condition muscle growth conditioning reduce the stress level better communication skill that yeah. all are benefit of the adventure sport so, now with the uh, so many different kind of the uh, researchers and our teachers they have the research finding different kind of the impact uh, positivities of the our uh, effectiveness in the society in the grassroots in the young people and adolescents so many research paper are finding this is all the research findings so far are did a research scholar so this much only i want to share uh events sports what why most important in society what is such color done so far finding of the nange presentation ko to go so mana jo kra hai re from the santa ubre aga this much only i want to speak on this situation so i like to thanks everyone who listening of the as a keen was speaker so thank you so much thank you sir thank you very much for the detailed explanation the introduction to the adventure sports as a keynote address now before moving on uh, those who have uh, switch on their mics if they are not speaking please keep it in mute because it disturbs the program so please make sure you are keeping it in mute if you are not speaking okay now moving on uh, we have the first speaker for today uh, may i uh, hand over the session to the moderator dr m nodia chand hod Wait. department of yoga okay good morning everybody good morning today the state level seminar webinar that's uh, it's very interesting on the eventual sports uh, first of all uh, i would like to thanks to our respected vice chancellor manipur university dr the uh, sri jarnan singh and then the different invited speakers especially dr k romeo maitai dr l surjit singh dr g anita devi different speakers and the specially organizing team leading uh, by the dr l santosh singh thank you very much for giving the opportunities to be here and today the first speaker of this adventures sport is the k romeo maitai i would like to give the some introduction about him Dr. K. R. V. Maite is currently the secretary of Indian Mountaineering Foundation, INF, North East Zone. He has climbed many major peaks in Nepal and Indian Himalayas. He has led the Mount Everest expedition successfully and created many records. As a licensed officer, he had led Italian, Japanese, and other foreign mountaineering expeditions in Himalayas. He was the leader of all India mountaineering, that is IMF mountaineering expeditions to Mount Gerizen in Indochina border 2013. He also led India Asian Friendship Car Rally, covering Sorry. five countries. He led many joint adventures expeditions with Nepal, Bhopal, and the Myanmar countries. he had initiated to open the certificate courses in adventure sports in manipur university kanchi board he is a qualified instructor in lane water and aero based adventure sports uh, good morning everyone uh, thank you to manipur university and the coordinator adventure sports uh, santosh singh for organizing a webinar on the adventure sports and i would like to thank all the technical members and moderator ajay nodia san so uh, my topic is on introduction of adventure sports ajay uh, santos i share to you about the great things never came from comfort zones uh, this is my message to everyone and uh, my topic is introduction of adventure sports uh, so this webinar is uh, organized by manipur university in collaboration with indian mountaineering foundation nordi zone and supported by fit india movement so we have to come out from the comfort zone to achieve something in our life so everyone is running behind comfort 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 so we have to come out from the comfort zone 
to get or to achieve something in our life. This is my message to everyone. So what is adventure sports? Uh, our keynote speaker, he had already explained about a uh, little bit about adventure sports. Again, I'm uh, explaining about uh, what is adventure sports. Uh, that is in a very uh, easy way, an unusual, exciting or dangerous experience. Adventure sports is different from other sports. Uh, it is totally unusual and sometimes very exciting and it's always involved with dangerous experience and we used to call them there is no danger there is no adventure so uh, danger is always there in adventure sports these activities often involve speed high a high level of physical exertion and high specialized gear or spectacular stunts that means uh, in adventure sports we used to climb mountains high mountains and uh, the level of physical exertion is is too much. And to the last breath, we used to our last breath in climbing mountains. And we are using different types of specialized gears, and it's all are tested. Uh, all the equipments are tested by UIAA, that is Union of International Alpine Association. It is based in France, so they have tested all the equipments. So in the adventure sports, we are using all the tested and uh, branded equipments. For the safety, these adventure sports can be competitive or non-competitive, non and often involve individual participants rather than team. Sometimes adventure sports goes in a team, or sometimes people used to go in solo. But normally, adventure sports involve in a group. The high danger associated with the activities place the participants at high risk for injury and or death in the case of accident or mistake. So I have already told you that adventure sports is involved uh, risk factor. There's lots of risk factors, but we are taking the calculated risk factors. But sometimes due to the negligence, due to the failure of the equipments, uh, the casualties happen. So here is again a beautiful line from Swami Vivekananda. He says, take risks in your life. If you win, you can live. If you lose, you can guide. So this is a very beautiful, and we have to we try to follow this at least. Uh, we have to take risks in our life to achieve something. If you win, then it's very good. You can lead everybody. If you lose, then also you can guide with the experience. So this is a very beautiful line from Swami Vivekananda. So at uh, adventure sports, uh, in another term is called outward bound school it is uh, founded in united kingdom in 1941 by kurt han so before that also they are doing lots of adventure activities but uh outdoor bound school is a specialized uh, school based for based in uk they started uh, uh, learning they started introduce of adventure based school in uk in 1941 by kurt han in india it came very late uh, after the climbing of Mount Everest by Sir Inman Hillary and Tanjing Norgate in 1953, uh, Himalayan Mountaineering Institute, uh, one of the prestigious and one of the oldest and the finest mountaineering institute, is started in 1954. It is also my alma mater. I trained from this institute. So in India, after the establishment of Himalayan Mountaineering Institute, the adventure movement started. So, Adventure is nature's own workshop to repair our body and mind. Adventure sports is also a stress buster. So this is the COVID um, uh, lockdown time. So many, so many people, they are the victim of stress and anxiety. But if they are engaged with adventure sports, then they can uh, uh, remove their anxiety. And so it's called stress buster. The participants are exposed to risks. So whatever the activities is involved risks and danger so there is again one saying no risks no adventure so in adventure sports if there is no risk uh, there is no adventure so uh, risk is always involved in adventure sports uncertainty forces of nature and struggle for survival in sometimes we uh, deal with different um, situation and we always struggle for survival either in lane here or water. 
Excellence in adventure sports enhances the sense of achievement and national pride and patriotism. In mountaineering expeditions or other expeditions, the members used to carry their national flags. So, for example, we are uh, going for an Indian team, we always carry the national tricolor flag and we uh, reach on the top of the mountain, we unfurl the flag. So it is the national pride and patriotism. So I already told you that adventure sports is a stress buster in the race of life. In order to get rid of trauma of exams, career and results, the best way to distress oneself in adventure sports. So our youths to learn or train in advanced adventure sports to get rid of uh, exams, trauma and stress, distress themselves. It's, it is the only way to introspection. A child's providing laser time, it gives you etern eternal pleasure and calmness. It takes you away from competitive surrounding and brings you to a positive aura. Through this, one can understand one's capabilities and talents for the valuing oneself. It encourages us to think about our own betterment. Adventure sports give us enthusiasm and courage to explore ourselves. So mainly, we, we never challenge to the nature. Some, some people say uh, uh, they challenge with the nature, they challenge the mountain and they conquer. This is a very wrong word, I should say. We can't challenge with the nature. Nature is huge, so big. So in adventure, we explore ourselves. We know ourselves by doing adventure sports, our abilities, our physical level or mental level, mental level. Adventure sports stimulate the balanced growth of body and mind. In the past, learning was focused in three R's, that is reading, writing, and arithmetic, where the present emphasis are on the three H's, that is head, heart, and hand. So in adventure, we always use head, heart, and hand. It's a combination of head, heart, hand. It has been realized that the head, the heart, and the hand get the best training in itself sustaining activities like the adventure sports. We need the kind of education by which character is formed, strength of mind, increase the intellect, is expanded, and by which one can stay in one's own feet. Swami Vivekananda said. The participants has to compete with him and natural forces. The importance of teamwork, camaraderie, and concentration are never overemphasized in this sports. Thus, it is one of the most important training ground for developing self-confidence, emotional stability, and leadership quality. The promotion of advanced sports will have profound social impact by diverting the vibrant energy of our youths in constructive activities rather than being hooked by anti-social and anti-national elements. Youths are our future, which are responsible for the destiny of our nation. Their overall development is our best investment. Our youth must develop the spirit of adventure in their blood. Adventure and youth are interrelated, and it has rightly been said that any nation that fosters adventure in its youth remains young and proves invisible. The promotion of adventure schools shall automatically promote adventure tourism, which will turn at flavor to tourism industry and improve the economy of the region always in the, for the country. And why adventure sports? Why we are doing adventure sports? Activities relating to adventure sports and outdoor sports are essential components of human resources development. Adventure sports also provide beneficial recreation, improve productivity, and foster social harmony and discipline. The object of adventure is to stimulate a spirit of adventure to reveal and develop sturdier qualities of character both physical and mental, to instill a sense of comradeship, discipline, self reliance service to the community, physical fitness, and ability to think and live adventures. So adventure sports activities will be a nice educational program which can save the lives of many youths who are otherwise would be victim of drugs and other antisocial elements. The future of our country is largely dependent on the quality and physical, moral, and intellectual strength of its youths. 
if our youths with strong moral strength and sense of dedication to any noble cause for the nation, we need not worry for our future. There is where we find the importance of adventure sports. The promotion of adventure sports shall play a major role in molding the character of our youths. It is needless to mention the importance of adventure sports in building a healthy nation. So adventure is very, very important for the youths. So some common uh, problem faced by youth, especially in Manipur, drug abuse, because youths have huge energy. So if they are not channel channelized that energy, so they become antisocial elements and they uh, involve in the drug abuse. Unemployment is also a big problem in Manipur. Lack of skillful persons, lack of higher studies facility in the state, insurgency problem, not much exposure to mainstream economic and political world, suicide cases, relationship issues, and social media addiction. And again, social media addiction is a big problem nowadays because of lockdown and COVID-19 problem. So uh, here, the third number, lack of skilled person, but see, uh, Manipur has huge potential for adventure sports. So, but the problem is we don't have many skillful persons to handle adventure sports in the state. So we have to train many, many youths in different uh, type of adventure sports, might be in lane base, aero base, water base, to handle, uh, to run the adventure sports in the state. Schemes of adventure sports. Here, Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports, Government of India, has a scheme called Rajiv Gandhi Adventure Schemes, under which adventure camps are conducted for national service scheme, volunteers, and adventure activities undertaken in these camps include trekking, mountain, and desert, wild water rafting, parasailing, paragliding, and basic skiing. So, those who are in the NSS, so they will get the chances of attending such type of adventure activities. And another is Ministry of Personal and Training Government of India under the Prime Minister of India. There is a scheme called Promotion of Adventure Sports among the central government employees. So if any government employee under the uh, central government, if they want to or they undergo any type of adventure activities, so they are allowed to go uh, and attend the activities and they will get special leave for this. And government also sponsor the whole activities. This is a very uh, good initiative taken, taken by our Honorable Prime Minister of India. And very interesting thing is, a Central Board of School Education introduced adventure sports in the curriculum. But I don't know whether their teachers have trained the students in the school or not, but it's a very good initiative taken by CBAC. They have introduced adventure sports in their curriculum in class 11 and 12. And another one is UGC University Grant Commission under the Ministry of Human Resources, Government of India, initiated a scheme for promotion of adventure sports for the students through National Adventure Foundation, uh, New Delhi. So they have also conducted different types of uh, land based, aero based, and water based adventure activities. For the Northeast states, we have a National Adventure Foundation chapter in Manipur. It's looking after all the eight states uh, to, for promoting adventure sports. So we have Indian Mountain and Foundation. This is the apex uh, body of the adventure sports in the country. They sponsor mountaineering expeditions. They promote sport climbing competitions and training and many other adventure activities. So we have a chapter in the Nordics also, uh, based in head office is based in Infa. And another was National Adventure Foundation, New Delhi. Uh, and other uh, activities, they also organize uh, different types of adventure activities. So in adventure sports, we can divide it into three parts. Uh, that is lane based, we call it terrestrial adventure sports. The second was is uh, aquatic adventure sports. Aquatic means water sports, aquatic adventure sports. And third one is aero adventure sports, mean uh, it's, it's with uh, air, activities with the air. So adventure sports can be divided into three parts. That is lane, water, and air. So what is terrestrial adventure sports or lane-based adventure sports? Uh, Manipur is a gold mine of adventure sports where any kind of adventure sports can be conducted. So uh, God has gifted Manipur because in Manipur we have blue mountains, 
many many big rivers lakes thick jungles so we can conduct any type of adventure sports in manipur uh, what are the land based adventure sports uh, here alpine sports that is mountaineering rock climbing high altitude trekking snow skiing bungee jumping cycle safari mountain biking jungle safari motorcycle safari jeep lining caving bmx racing etc the scenic beauties of the state to learn many trekkers and adventure lovers of the world so we have huge potential but the but the but the main problem is we don't have skilled people to handle all these activities so that is a very big problem for the state so this is the uh, this this slide is uh, is a picture of mountaineering mountaineering is the art of science of climbing high mountains so in mountaineering if the route is very danger or risky the chances of avalanche or chances of uh, hidden crevasses so climbers used to drop up themselves to each other if one climber is falling to the crevasses or skid from somewhere then other members can save this is called arresting so uh, in some uh, technical places the members used to go like this by uh, with the help of ropes is called rope up so again this is the mountaineering you can see this picture this is the infamous uh, hillary step uh, in mount everest so i'll explain later on about the mountaineering so mountaineering involves four principal activities that is walking walking on the ice walking on the snows rock climbing if if the mountain is having rocks then we have to know how to climb the rocks and snow on ice climbing and navigation navigation is also very important in some mountains the virgin mountains the virgin places we have to find the routes by reading uh, the map or by using gps or other other means so mountaineering is involved walking rock climbing and ice uh, snow or ice climbing and navigation trekking trekking is the art of living traveling and surviving in the great outdoors and being one with nature so trekking in manipur uh, we can uh, do lots of trekking we have uh, so many trekking routes and we have to be explore more routes in future so this is high altitude trekking trekking under the snow condition and snow skiing but uh, so snow skiing is very popular in high mountains but uh, unfortunately we don't have Uh, snow cleared mountains so snow skiing is not uh, possible in manipur bungee jumping is a very new adventure sport but is very now it is very popularized in the country and i am also trained in bungee jumping so very exciting very thrill uh, activity and uh, very risky adventure sports sometimes the the jumper his or her uh, heartbeat goes up to 200 beats per minute before jump or uh, during the jump is very risky some might be very fatal to the jumpers so uh, this is a small clip about how we jump uh, in bungee this is my own video small video i'll show you uh, this is my training jump Uh, bungee jump can be done in two ways that is from the natural cliff or from the uh, crane this is almost 50 meter high crane so during the training i used to jump from uh, this uh, ready made crane uh, this jump was taken during my training bungee jump and the next one is uh, BMX. A uh, few years back, Manipur is very famous for uh, BMX uh, shows, stunts. But nowadays, little bit uh, goes down about uh, uh, BMX. But nowadays, uh, cycling is very popular in Manipur. And mountain terrain biking. And uh, Manipur again is got gifted for mountain terrain biking. And I myself conducted many international uh, mountain biking competitions. And I introduced uh, the first. uh international mountain terrain biking at uh, 
the famous Tawang that is called uh, MTV Tawang Challenge. The riders has to cross the 14,000 uh, feet high Sela Pass. So, and again, I did the uh, uh, cycling by crossing the Khardumla Pass in Leh and Ladakh, the, the highest motorable road uh, in Ladakh. So, that is my experience in cycling. And uh, Moto Car Rally again is a very uh, popular nowadays, and we are very glad to have uh, the Asian Highways number two is crossing the Manipur. And because of this oh. highway, uh, it connects to the South Asian country. So, fortunately, I was the leader of the uh, in India Asian Friendship Car Rally uh, by covering five countries in collaboration with the uh, Thailand counterparts and uh, uh, Malaysian riders, car rallies. So these are the pictures while we are doing uh, car rally. So uh, car rally was very popular nowadays, and uh, because of this Asian highways number two connecting Imphal and other Asian countries, so many car rally uh, coming to Imphal to visit other Asian countries. And then another uh, is all terrain vehicle ATV. Again, this is also very popular nowadays, but in Manipur, so we have ATV bikes and we can introduce ATV by making uh, ATV route in, in, in some other places. And slittering uh, is also kind of uh, a rappling down. So this picture also taken during the uh, adventure program at uh, Bomdila and this lady, she is uh, our Manipuri Everest star from Manipur. Before climbing Everest, she was trained in other students during adventure camp. Vidyavati Devi from Manipur. And Terralin Traverse is a traditional uh, uh, way of crossing rivers and nalas by the villagers in different parts of the country. You might have seen in Leh and Ladakh, Nepal. Himachal and especially in Arunachal. This picture is taken uh, from Arunachal Pradesh. People used to cross the rivers by using canes and uh, cable wires. But now this has become an adventure sport known as Terralin Traverse. Uh, this is a way of life for the villagers who are living in the remote places in the Himalayas. And the second one is aquatic sports and called uh, water sports. Sport, that sports carried out on water. The potential of aquatic adventure sports is not yet exploited in the state. There are plenty of wetland lakes and reservoirs in the state. These natural and artificial water bodies have enormous potential for soft water adventure sports like water skiing, snorkeling, windsurfing, speedboat parasailing, sailing, canoeing, kayaking, etc. I'll explain one by one, by one in the future slides. So this is water-based adventure sports called wild water rafting. So we have taken this picture during our rafting expedition in Arunachal Pradesh. Arunachal is famous for the wild water rafting. They have huge and beautiful uh, rivers for undertaking wild water rafting. In Manipur also we have a few rivers. That is uh, Barag River. Another one is uh, uh, we have uh, not so big rivers, but we can conduct what water rafting in Manipur also. This is kayaking, another different types of uh, water sports. Kayakers try to negotiate the rapids. And snorkeling and scuba diving. Snorkeling we can conduct in Lauta or uh, our water bodies. We have so many big, big water bodies in Manipur, so we can introduce. Uh, snorkeling and the second one is scuba diving. So scuba diving is now uh, open in uh, Nordis uh, in Silong near Silong. Uh, uh, scuba diving is conducted under the National Institute of Mountain and Light Sports Mimas. So scuba diving is also uh, training center is in Arunachal and conducted in Meghalaya. Surfing, yes, uh, is also uh, one of the water sports, but it will be a little bit difficult to conduct in Manipur because of the, our wind speed is very less to conduct the surfing, wind surfing. And jet ski, yes, we can conduct jet ski uh, in uh, different parts of uh, water bodies in Manipur. We have so many water bodies, so we can conduct uh, jet ski in Lautar, 
Ugadam, Kopumdam, Sindadam, Lemataak, uh, anywhere. So jet, jet ski can be uh, introduced in Manipur. And water skiing, this is also one of the easiest uh, water sports. We can try it in Loktak Lake many times. Uh, and we can uh, introduce jet ski, water skiing in uh, other water bodies also. We can do the jet ski uh, without uh, sleds or barefoot also we can do jet, jet ski, water skiing without the sleds. So now the third one is aero adventure sports. What are the aero adventure sports? So, sports that are carried out on here some of aero sports which could be readily organized in manipur are parasailing paragliding hang gliding skydiving gliding or air ballooning micro light flying or gliding para jumping windsurf flying etc these are few disused and partially used airfields in manipur these airfields are ideal for the promotion of aero, aero adventure sports we may consider these fields for parasailing, power gliding, microlight flying, gliding, etc. We can conduct paragliding in many places of Manipur with little efforts to develop the sites. Some of the sites suitable for paragliding are available for hang gliding. So in Manipur, we have a, a hang gliding association, but nowadays it's defunct, it's not uh, continuing their activities. And we have some uh, use and disuse airfields, for example, Kwerengi airfield now is occupied by the army people, but it can be used as a uh, uh, place for the aero adventure sports. A uh, few years back, we conducted uh, parasailing para activities. We trained thousands of youths from Manipur in the Kwerengi airfield in parasailing and uh, paramotors. In Manipur, we have already introduced parasailing, paramotor, and paragliding. So the first one is uh, parasailing. Uh, this picture is taken during the parasailing training in Koirengai. And uh, the, the third, second one is parasailing uh, conducted in Manipur University campus uh, during the uh, certificate course on adventure sports. And the third one is uh, parasail done by one of the faculty member from Manipur universities. Ajar Ranjit is the president of Manipur Muta, Manipur University Teacher Association. He did parasailing with the trainees. So we already introduced parasailing in Manipur University. Paragliding, yes, we uh, conducted paragliding in Manipur, and uh, there's lots of good places to conduct paragliding. Uh, it's very good, suitable for paragliding in Manipur during the winter days. Hang gliding, yes, we have started hang gliding long time back, but nowadays the association is defunct. But still, we have in Manipur hang gliders are there. Hot air ballooning, yes, we have introduced hot air ballooning in Manipur. Paramotos, we have paramotos in Manipur. It's also a very uh, enjoyable uh, uh, among the aero sports. Uh, just pack up the engine and you can take off and land anywhere with the collapsible wing. It's very easy to transport and easy to control the para. Uh, para. Micro light flying, we don't have micro light flying, it's a collapsible wing, and the pilot and the co pilot can fly together in micro light. Uh, in in uh, Assam, Gohati, Arunachal, we conducted many micro light flying activities. Para jumping, yeah, uh, especially para jump is done by the army peoples, and especially for the uh, lucky NCG cadet, though uh, they got a chance to jump, para jump in the para jumping school in Agra, especially for the NCG cadets. Skydiving, again, one of the uh, very thrilling adventure sports. Uh, skydiving in Nepal, uh, civilians can do skydiving with the instructors. There is a place called Namchi. Uh, Nepal has started uh, skydiving, every skydiving. They can skydive with the instructors they took up to the level of the Everest region and they jump from the height of the Everest and land at the uh, Namche. So that is called Everest skydiving. They are charging around 1.5 to 2 lakhs per jump. Wingsuit flying is one of the latest invention in aerospace and very risky. Uh, just have the uh, suit and you can jump from anywhere. But it's very dangerous. And the latest one is flyboard. You can uh, carry the 
engine like a backpack and you can take off from anywhere and land anywhere. So in India, flyboard is not introduced, but in Singapore and other countries, they have started flying flyboard. It's very expensive. It was so uh, earlier we used to call uh, adventure sports, but now it's called uh, it's becoming an Olympic event called sport climbing. Uh, earlier people used to call them as rock climbing, but it become an Olympic event. So in sport climbing, we can divide into three parts. That is lead climbing. The first one is lead climbing, which tests how far one can one can climb from the bottom to the top. One has to climb by anchoring himself or herself for safety to to reach to the top. And second one is speed climbing, which tests how fast one can climb on the wall. One has to run on the wall. And the third one is bouldering. Bouldering is just uh, not not uh, higher than the three meters without any equipment. The one the climber has to climb uh, the routes, which tests how difficult a route one can climb. So uh, in sport climbing, leg speed and bouldering is a combination of sport climbing. Now it's become an Olympic event. So Manipur has done very good in sport climbing. We have produced so many international climbers, international medalists from Manipur. The main problem now we are facing here is we don't have standard climbing wall in Manipur. The one of the oldest uh, climbing wall in Nordisk is in Manipur at the Kamala Rock Wall in the MTA campus in Minitong. But nowadays this wall is not, uh, uh, is outdated, outdated for the uh, competitions so if you have a standard climbing wall in manipur then can we can be the champions in the national championship so what is sport climbing the art of vertical movement defying gravity has always been an away inspiring activity demanding courage while retaining all the thrill and drama of an adventure activity sport climbing integrates a high degree of safety features into it making it a no danger and no risk activity as long as the safety aspects are not compromised. Thus, sport climbing is the tool and magic win that transformed the chicken heart into daredevil. An adventure sports and unto Olympic sports in 2020. Now 2020 Olympic is again because of pandemic, COVID-19 problem, they have postponed to 2021. So uh, if you are doing sport climbing, if you have a chicken heart, then after practicing the sport climbing, then you become a daredevil. So we can transform the youth or children uh, by doing sport climbing. So this is a small video clip I'll show you how 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 the athletes climb on the uh, face. This is root A and this is root B. And the international standard uh, wall should be minimum 15 meters in height. So they, uh, they, uh, they achieve the 15 meter in 6.30. The root, the person who climb on the root A is he scored 6.30 seconds and other, another climber in uh, 6.25 seconds. So this is the way how they climb on the speed wall. And mountaineers to know all the problem he is likely to face while in mountain. The spirit of adventure, which is a must for operating in the high altitudes, can be achieved by mountain training. So he has a very beautiful line from the Sir Edmund Hillary, the one who climbed Mount Everest with Tanjing Norway for the first time. He said, it is not a mountain we conquer, but ourselves. In adventure sports, normally people used to say we conquer the mountain, but we can't conquer the mountain, but we conquer ourselves in adventure sports. So, uh, if anybody wants to undergo adventure training, in future, then I'll share you some institutes, adventure training institutes in India. Indian Mountaineering Foundation, again, this is the apex body of the mountaineering. It is in Delhi. They also sponsored the eligible youths for undergoing different types of uh, mountaineering courses. Himalayan Mountaineering Institute, Achmai Darjeeling, it is one of the oldest and finest mountaineering institute in India. And the second one is Nehru Institute of Mountaineering, we used to call NIM Uttarkasi. 
Uttar Khan. This is also a national institute under the, uh, under the Ministry of Defense. In India, we have three national institutes under the government of India. The third one is National Institute of Mountaineering and Elite Sports, Iran, Arunachal Pradesh. In short, it calls NIMAS. So I am also one of the promoter of uh, NIMAS. I was associate from its inception of NIMAS. And the fourth one is Atal Bihari Bhaspai Institute of Mountaineering and Allied Sports, Manali, Nimachal Pradesh. It is under the state government. Jawahar Institute of Mountaineering and Winter Sports, Palgam in Jammu and Kashmir. And the uh, Indian Himalayan Center for Adventure Ecotourism, IGs Namchi Sikkim. This is also a very new institute coming up at Sikkim, the place called uh, Namchi, a beautiful place in Sikkim. So they have also conducted different uh, mountaineering courses and paragliding courses. And in Manipur, we have MMTA, Manipur Mountaineering and Trekking Association, Manipur Adventure Allied Sports Institution. Both institution is recognized by government of Manipur as the State Institute of Adventure Training and National Adventure Foundation Manipur sector. And again, Manipur University. Yes, we have we have introduced the certificate course in Manipur University. Uh, that is two months certificate course. Certificate Ticket will be issued from the Manipur University Authority. So we have successfully conducted a uh, two months certificate course in Manipur University. And after this COVID 19 pandemic, uh, we are planning to introduce a second uh, certificate course in, in the university. So, um, so many years in India, many people conduct adventure training programs. And without having the guidelines, so many accidents happen occurred and there's lots of people die because of uh, untrained people's handling adventure sports but from 2018 the adventure tour operator association of india in short it's called atwai and the ministry of tourism they have formed a guideline for all the adventure activities so anybody who wants to conduct adventure activities they have to follow these guidelines they have mentioned all the adventure activities, either in the lane, air, or water. So uh, these are the uh, about the uh, introduction of adventure sports. So if I have a time, then I I will continue a small a few slides on mountaineering. Uh, uh, in two thousand eleven. Uh, I am fortunate to lead one woman Everest expedition in 2011 and one or uh, two ladies from Arunachal, one is from the remote village of Arunachal, she is an orphanist, her name is Tine Mina, the lady with a black cap here yeah. and uh, another one is Man Anshu Zamsenpa, a housewife, the mother of two, uh, she started mountaineering very late and they trained from Manipur Mountaineering Institute under MMT. They have started adventure uh, activities under the uh, MMT. So we have a small team uh, under my belt. We uh, launch a small uh, expedition. Team is very small, but uh, we are facing a huge, very challenging mountain, Mount Everest. So this is the picture of Mount Everest. Uh, we we climbed the Mount Everest from the uh, Nepal side, that is called South side. This is the famous Kumbu Ice Pole. This is the Everest base camp. People used to stay here for one month for acclimatizing themselves before uh, attending the summit. Uh, this is the infamous and one of the uh, worst route, I should say, in the Everest re region called Kumbu Ice Pole. One has to cross this Kumbu Ice Pole ice fall if, if you climb from the Nepal side. And after crossing this, uh, we established the KM1 at 19,500 feet, KM2, 21,000, at KM3, 21,500. Then the last KM is South Pole, that is called Dead Zone unto the Tenure. From here, uh, the mountaineers push to the summit in a single night. So this is the route of the Mount Everest from uh, South or from Nepal side and the famous North Pole side from the Tibet side. You, if you climb from this area, is called North Pole. But uh, from from North Pole, it will be very easier because uh, th there is no ice fall like Kumbu. 
So, uh, in the center, he is a legendary in mountaineering, Appa Serpa. He climbed Mount Everest for 21 times uh, during our expedition. He was with us through all the expedition. And uh, she is a Tinemina, the first Lady Everest star from the Nordish, and I was the leader of the team. So, we were in the base camp in the Kungu High School. And this is the route. This is the route uh, of Kumbu Ice Fall by crossing the longest uh, uh, ice fall by by joining the five six ladders aluminum ladders together and crossing the open crevasse. So we have to cross one by one, and all the mountainers are waiting for their turn. And this is this is also one of the obstacles in the mountain. It is called open crevasse because of the weather. It, it's it's become wider and wider. But when the snow falls comes, it covers. But if someone is putting his feet on that, then the climber will fall down on the crevices. So open crevices is very dangerous in the mountain. So these are the narrow crevices, and sometimes the climbers have to cross such type of difficult routes. Anytime this uh, ice can uh, fall to your body, these are the glacier tables made of the wind and the uh, heat of the sun. And uh, sometimes we used to stay in a very harsh condition. Tents were destroyed by the strong winds and heavy snowfalls. And after uh, 17, 18,000 people used to start using the artificial oxygen even in the sleeping but some people they are very genius some people used to climb mount everest without without having uh, artificial oxygen but 99.9 .9 mountaineers use oxygen during their summit of everest so this is the uh, last camp that is called uh, south pole of the mount everest uh, that is the KM4 or infamous the dead job. Here the oxygen percentage is very, very thin, very, very less, and chances of survival is very less. So we are people used to have uh, uh, need the artificial oxygen for the survival. So this is if the weather is good, the conditions like this in the South Pole. And from the South Pole, the climbers have to push up for the summit. So, night time, all the night, people, uh, climbers used to have the headlamps and they push up for the summit in the next morning. So climbing is not all about being physically strong. At the end, our success is largely dependent on our mental strength. So, in very harsh conditions, your muscle is not working. So, if your mental strength is very strong, then mental strength pushes you to achieve the goal. So mental strength is very very important advances for so sometimes it's a very infamous picture uh, more than 200 people line up to summit for the average so this is called traffic jam on average because of this traffic jam people dies on the mountain if they are waiting for half an hour one hour two hour on the mountain if sometimes they die because of uh, hypoxia and sometimes they died of because of uh, um, they finish their oxygen and they collapse on the spot. So this, this is happening on Mount Everest three years back. So again, the last obstacle on the Everest, this is called Hillary step. The last step, people used to cross this ice, ice and rock, mixture of rock. It's very difficult to cross the ice and rock. So some people coming down, some people going up for the summit and sometimes the traffic jams happen in this area, the Hillary State. So this is the uh, summit of the Tinemina on the top of the Everest. So tricolor flag, proud the called the tricolor flag, or natural flag, and our expedition was sponsored by the Jindal State. So Jindal flag. This is the Sagar Matha uh, in Nepal. They call Sagar Matha in Tibet, Chumulunga. In English, we call Everest the highest point on earth, Mount Everest. So this is a small video clip. Also, so here 
wind is so strong, sometimes 90, 110, 20 kilometers per hour. So this is the highest point on Earth called the top of the Everest. So we have to anchor ourselves, otherwise you, you can be blown by the strong wind. So another, in the second summit, uh, Ansu Zamsenpa, the lady, the mother of two, she summit Everest uh, two times during the 2011 Everest expedition. She created the history, she created the record by climbing Everest twice in 10 days. So this is the second summit. but. Uh, all together now she climbed Mount Everest five times and recently she was awarded uh, the highest Tenjing Norge award uh, by the government of India for her achievements in mountaineering. So this is the video again for Anshu. From the top of the dress. This video is taken during her second attempt to the address. So this is the story of our uh, Everest expedition in 2011, uh, create many history and at the end uh, we were felicitated by the President of India for the successful Mount Everest expedition. So uh, this is my last slide and once again thank you so much for your patient hearing. Thank you. The last okay. question. Well, thank you very much. The last yeah. question, sir. Last question from the oh. Anuradha. Anuradha. Anuradha Khoirom, Doctor. Doctor Anuradha Khoirom. Doctor Anuradha. Doctor Anuradha. Hello, Anuradha. Hello. Anuradha. Hello. Yeah, please. Uh, please. Hi, sir. Yeah. Uh, my yeah. question is like uh, hello. as hello. Put your question. What are questions? Yeah, many of many of my students are interested in yes. such kinds of sports. If so, then what are the career prospects that they have in such uh, kind in, in this field? Okay, uh, nice, very nice question. Uh, our uh, uh, in the keynote address of the, uh, the program, uh, our Oza Santos has already explained about the scopes and career options of adventure sports. See. Uh, it's a very new uh, sport, a new discipline in the entire Nordic, even in India also. There's lots of scopes. If you train in mountaineering, you can be the uh, trekking guide, tour guide, and tour operator. If you are trained in mountaineering, and if you follow the guidelines of the, uh, the Ministry of Tourism, if you are a trained person, then you can be the tourist guide, tour guide, and adventure operator. Likewise, if you are trained in water sports, same thing. There is lots of scopes. In, uh, for example, in Manipur, in the tourism department, we don't have any trained person in Manipur tourism. This thing is happening in all over India. India is one of the finest places for adventure tourism. 
but in the tourism sectors in the tourism departments we are we are having lack of trained manpower in tourism departments that is why private firm private agencies they are operating the adventure sports so manipur is god gifted place for adventure tourism and adventure sports so scope is huge scope is huge but we have to be tap and train our own people to run the activities in the state okay great okay so we need uh, more of exploring our place yes 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 we, we, we have to well equip ourselves our youth should be trained in different aspects of adventure sports to handle the potential of manipur thank you so much thank you so much sir. okay Welcome. okay the now uh, question question session is closed yeah uh, all operators please mute your mic now uh, this is the time to thanks to the speaker now before giving the thanks to the speaker i would like to sum up what he said see this uh, is a very great things for the adventures of sports that is the great things never comes from the comfort zone that is everything should be way work we have to hard work yes yes from these uh, adventures we have a lot of benefits that's already we know it that is we can save from the different unwanted characters like the use of drugs and the unwanted uh, happenings in the society can be controlled by this uh, having activities adventures and uh, this is also very good that uh, we can utilize our head our hands and then hard work is also involved with the expenditure this expedition and uh, this expedition is a very very important in the northeast especially in manipur because in manipur is a situation that we have the enough natural resources as well as our youths are very talented and the side by side the requirement for to fulfill this is that we need to cooperate the experts and then association or that institution like the universities and the expert we have to be tied up the better way then the, we can get the skill person now it's also we know at the, the present juncture is lagging behind of that skill person so we have to train it we have to produce the skill person and that, that skills we have to be utilized to the, our youths then one day our youths will be the better who better citizen in the nation and that we can proud we can have it a better hook to the international levels also and uh, this is a very hopeful that in near future we will do the better way from the organization side from the institution side and from the experience side that we need to have the more explore for the other cooperate and uh, to give the more emphasis to the citizens of this uh, nation to the these states so today i think it's uh, more enough that we can explain more and that i'm very happy that this adventures sports is very important and that this state seminar is also very important during this pandemic situation by this way we can explore our ideas and that this is a few scopes all the youths of the manipur can listen and all the youths of the other states and the other you know other abroad also they are listening it is a very great thing this is initiating we are study different in the classroom and the such type of uh, webinars is also very important so i thanks to the authority manipur university uh, especially the vice chancellor dr jarnan singh sir jarnan singh and then uh, this uh, team of the expert that's uh, dr k romeo dr surjit dr anita they are very well experienced in this field and then side by side the helping these things from the manipur university side especially physical and sports science department and i think especially uh, to the this uh, what i call uh, organizer especially dr santos to organize these things is very great thing so uh, at last i especially thanks to keromio he is a very experience and then work in the different field and to the push to the youths for the further betterments of the society and it's a great thing uh, by giving these few words i invite uh, next day that is we will have the two other speakers that is dr el surjit and uh, uh, dr z anita devi padmisri awardee they will spoke something uh, speak will uh, better way in the next day so please be on the line the next day and uh, thank you have a nice day thank you very much